Welcome to another edition of Wings Weekly. Jake Lankinex here along with head coach Francis Anzalone. Coach, uh, a weekend up in Minot that yielded a, a win in an overtime shootout where uh, Matt Pulver was able to secure the victory for your team in a great game by uh, Peter Tomei as well. Saturday, a little bit uh, of a, a very tight game. Went 0-0 through, uh, through two periods but uh, ended up ending up uh, in a 2-0 loss there. But um, if you're playing Minot, just like you know, we've talked about with Bismarck too. That it just seems like you know these games are very hotly contested, and there's a lot of good that can be taken away from it as a whole. What what did you think? Let's start with Friday's game. What did you, you like from Friday's matchup? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I told the team after the game, and I think we talked about this in our pregame interview Saturday. I think there's two types of team wins. There's a team win where everybody's going, everybody's contributing everyone's at their max level and you find a way to win and then there's another type of team win where everybody's going pretty hard some guys are struggling some guys are fighting it and individuals step up when the spotlights on them and when they're needed at key times I thought our game on Friday was the second thing I just mentioned mm -hmm. I thought we played hard uh, I thought everybody tried some guys fought it a bit and the two guys that I felt really stepped up when they were called upon were Peter Tomei, who was fantastic with about five minutes left in the second, mm -hmm. and he was very good in the third period when Minot made their typical, natural, home ice third period push. Peter made three, what I like to call, he's not a pro goalie, but money saves. Yeah. Just those saves that you need if you're going to win down the stretch. And then, hey, the bottom line is, you tap Matt Pulver on the shoulder in the shootout when you need him to score, and he goes in and he scores, and he makes it look easy. So it was a team win, uh, and it was a good team win from the standpoint of guys worked, and those two guys stepped up for the team, for the boys, for each other. That's what I took away as the positive on Friday. Yeah, well, and there was a lot that, that, could, you know, that you could take away. You know, we talked a little bit about the energy and so on, and you know, certainly everybody was playing with desire and uh, with, a, with a lot of energy. Friday night, and you know, you talked about uh, Peter. You know, they're in outshot in the third. I believe it was 10-3 or something like that. But uh, there were some huge saves where he was on absolute, on one side of the of the crease. I mean, or maybe even out of the crease a little bit. And you know, a strange bounce or a rebound comes out onto the weak side, and he's diving all the way across the crease to to make it an incredible save. And I always love it when when you're watching. And uh, you know, if you were watching on fast hockey, or maybe it's a, a replay that you can watch on someone's account or whatever, you'll see the guy who took the shot put his hands up in the air, like you gotta be kidding me! <laughs> and you know, you made a pretty good save when you're a goaltender and you have the shooter doing that kind of thing. So yeah, we've had a lot of those lately. So it's nice to see the other team yeah. feeling the frustration a little bit. That is absolutely true. But uh, you know, again, you guys go into a, yet another overtime game, and this time it goes into a shootout. You know, that we talked last week a little bit about the the three on three in the overtime. And this game was a, a little bit more sound in the in the overtime period, and obviously, you know, the work that you guys put in over the course of the week kind of, uh, well, allowed that to, to happen, I guess, and, and kind of secured. Because we talked about the possession, yeah. And every time you know you you know you give it up, they're going to get another opportunity. And and defensively, I thought in particular, you know, you guys did a really good job uh, in the in the overtime period. What what did you see some of the things that you worked on in practice in that overtime period, perhaps? Yeah, I believe so. We tried to implement those things, and I'm a big believer that the beauty of our game is it's the ultimate read and react sport, mm -hmm. and I don't think as a coach, I think it's dangerous to try and program the players to be robotic. I don't think that's such a bad thing defensively. I believe defense needs to be as black and white and clear cut as possible, but a dynamic situation like three on three overtime requires thinking on the part of the players. So I want to be clear about that. We don't want our guys programmed, but we did want our guys to possess it, to hang on to it, to try to make plays, but maybe change the definition a bit, Jay, of what a play really is. Right. Just let's be a little more smart and a little more sound because historically, at least since I've been here, our team's been very, very comfortable in the shootout. So listen, if we, if we play it smart and we don't score in the overtime, what's the worst thing that can happen? We get to the shootout where we're pretty darn good. And we outshot Minot 2-1 uh, in the three-on-three. -three. Their one shot we felt was a legit scoring chance and we thought we had one, maybe two chances. Um, we got to the shootout um, and Matt Pulver came through when he needed and Peter Tomei made three really good saves. He was tested by the three Minot shooters. 
So the bottom line is we found a way in a game we played hard in. I really liked our start on Friday. I liked our start on Saturday too. And then in the third, when Minot made that natural push, Peter was good and he carried that into the overtime and through the shootout. And I was really happy for him because that was a complete game on his part and he has wanted to do that for a really long time. Yeah, def definitely an emotional moment for Peter Rebs and being able to win on the, the shootout. You could see the energy that uh, he was in the celebration and so on afterward that followed. You know, what I mentioned, I'd be remiss without mentioning uh, the Pulver uh, uh, shootout goal. If I was saying, you know, you're watching fast hockey, maybe go back and check it out because that was a, an amazing goal. That And you mentioned it, it, he made it look so easy. I mean, he's standing straight up and down, just kind of going in as if he was in, the, in a hallway or in a driveway and just kind of flipped it into the upper right-hand corner and skated off like no big deal. <laughs> yeah, so. I think, uh, you know, good players have a little bit of a swagger, and Matt's a good player. We all know his story, his journey back, battling through injury, and that completely changed that young man's perspective. So um, for a kid like him, that is easy with what he's gone through. Just go in, have some fun, try and score. And, Jay, I just love that he shot it because the ice was, was brutal. We don't get a dry scrape yeah. before the shootout, uh, let alone a clean cut. So the shootout is a shooter's game, and... I'm proud of Matt for just going in there and just don't think, just shoot. Yep, absolutely. And so a big win there uh, that brings things that much closer in the standings, of course. And you turn around Saturday, kind of a long day, a late game, yeah. uh, and a lot, lot going on Saturday day. You get a chance to look over some film with the guys and all those sorts of things, and then you go back out Saturday, and as I mentioned, a very tight game. Uh, through the, the first two periods, it was 0-0, and it just really seemed like a struggle for both teams to really kind of get any momentum and get any uh, – um, to make it any traction, I guess. Well, what do you take away from Saturday's game? Well, I'll tell you this because our fans kind of might, might get a giggle at it, and it is a reality. It was an 8 o'clock start, if I, I believe, and I think it started a little bit later. Yep. And uh, they had a club hockey, Division One club hockey game going on before us. And there was about 25 minutes from the end of the club hockey game to the start of our warm-up. And they had youth hockey starting at 6.30 a.m. in that rink. So that ice was really rough. That ice was really bad. So you, you don't want to pass up plays. Again, kind of like, like I just mentioned about the three-on-three. Three. You don't want to program the guys. But we wanted to be really firm and really smart with the puck. And neither team, and they're the home team, parents weekend, all that fun stuff, neither team could really get a ton going yeah. in that game. The ice was bad. I thought our guys managed it well. Again, I liked our start. I thought Minot had a little bit better start on Saturday than they did on Friday. But we took simple shots. We went to the net. In the second period, I, I thought we handled the second quite well. I thought we handled the second better on Saturday than we did on Friday. We had another goal called back that's very, very debatable. Yeah. And if it would have counted, it would have been an unbelievable goal for our team because it, would have, it, it played right into what we wanted to do. Get around the net, get greasy, hack and whack, put the puck over the line, whatever it takes, bad ice, second game of the weekend, and the referee leaned on his linesman who said one of our players kicked the puck in. I'm not sure about that, but it is what it is. And then in the third, we had a great first shift. And then the second shift of the third period, uh, one of their players, number 20, Moes, I thought he really stepped up and made a fantastic individual play. Could we have played the situation a little bit better? Sure. But he made a great individual play where he drove by RD and brought the puck to the net. I would like to see our guys do that a little bit more. And then after that, we still had some chances, but Minots, I thought they had some guys really step up. And on Saturday night, I felt like they did to us what we did to them on Friday. They had guys going, but Murray, the goalie, stepped up, pitched a shutout, played well. And then I thought some individuals, I'm not here to coach their team, but I thought some individuals did a really good job for them in the third period. Yeah. Credit them. I thought we kept poking and plugging and prying. Could we have done a little more? Yes. But you know what? We talked about we got to keep staying good against Brookings. We've got four big games against the Magicians coming up into the month. we got to start taking a bite out of Minot, uh, Bismarck, and Austin. And we took a little bite out of Minot this weekend. So not good enough, but a good step. Yeah. And, well, you know, you talked a little about in the third there when Moe's, he does, you know, a, a power kind of move that to, where they were able to yield them their first goal. That little bit of momentum that that gave them, I mean, they, they kind of took and ran with, and then I, I believe kind of a turnover in the neutral zone led to a, pow, a shorthanded goal for them to put them up 2-0. Um, I was noticing as the game went along, 
and, and maybe maybe this is off. Correct me if I if I'm wrong, but uh, it seemed like their penalty kill got more and more aggressive as the as the game went along. Instead of you know back in their zone being on the attack, they're coming out to the neutral zone, or you know even in, in, in instead of leaving one attacker back, there's two three guys back in in uh, in, in, in the wings defensive zone as you're trying to come out of your breakout. Um, is that crazy? I mean, did they, or did they make some adjustments as things that seemed to make things a little bit more difficult on the power no, play? No, it, it, it looked like they got a little more aggressive. Their kill has been aggressive, uh, I feel, uh, more aggressive over the last couple of weeks just in watching them on tape. Mm -hmm. They do a real good job. They front pucks. They're a very structured team. They're a very well-coached, organized team. I credit them a lot. Mm -hmm. But we didn't handle it that well. We played into it. You know, we shot pucks into people. Um, our power play right now, it was one for one on Friday. Mm -hmm. Good individual play. De Young over to Seamers after Pulver won a great battle to keep the puck in. Our power play right now needs to do two things better. We need to win the opening draw. We've lost the opening draw a lot lately, and it's been, it's been the same image. The opponent goes D to D, yep. and they clear it. And right away, that's 20 to 30 seconds off the clock, and we have to get back to winning races and battles. You don't do those two things, it's hard to talk about the structure. But yes, Minot made it a little bit harder, but yes, we were ready for it. And no, we did not execute to the level we need to. So that's going to be a priority for us this week as we get ready to have a great power play on Friday against Brookings and hopefully be a little bit better on the power play against these same Toros on Saturday. Absolutely. Well, there's kind of a look at uh, the weekend's games Friday and Saturday. We'll uh, look into the future here coming up in just a little bit. And no, I don't mean a crystal ball. Uh, we'll be back with a few words from our sponsor. Let's make a taco. <laughs> no, seriously. Start with a tortilla, soft tortilla, warm it, kiss it, don't kiss it. Chicken, how about tequila lime chicken? Now we're cooking. Slice this, peel that, snip those. Salsa, verde. Cheese, cotilla. Oh, forgot to mention. Guac, that's better. See, anyone can make a taco, but we're not anyone. We're Qdoba, and these are knockout tacos. Qdoba Mexican Eats, choose flavor. Welcome back to Wings Weekly as we continue looking forward uh, to the home games this weekend. Friday night Saturday, uh, and Saturday, both home. Friday night in Brook or excuse me, against Brookings. And then on Saturday, as Coach mentioned uh, before the break, we're uh, facing the, the Toros once again. Coach, it's been a while since you've seen Brookings. Um, what do you expect to see? I mean, you, I think it's the last five games that you've, your team has played them that you've been victorious. And uh, kind of a, a stylistic matchup that favors the Wings, or has anyway. Do you, do you, have you seen any... any a video as of late maybe that shows any changes or anything that either maybe a different wrinkle different look that they're gonna throw at you I don't believe so they're a good offensive team they're quick strike they turn the puck up pretty good when they come up with the puck in their own end whether it be off of a one face off or a one battle they have no problem trying to airlift the puck uh, in the sky or put it off the glass and their forwards have they'll they'll try to get behind our D they're good off the rush if you give it to them. They like to shoot. They've got some creative, skilled players. Um, so we have to combat that by winning the battles, by taking care of the puck. And we've had some success lately against them because we've tried to really dig into playing a possession game. Do we want to shoot? Yes, but we also don't mind hanging on to it, rolling around in the offensive zone, and striking at the right time. So. I don't expect a different game. I'm sure they're going to play really hard. I'm sure they're going to come in here um, with a swagger. It's a very, very big game. They right now occupy the last playoff spot in the division. They have a four-point lead over us for that last spot. We have one game in hand on them. We're playing them on Friday night. So it's going to be a huge, huge game. We've got to focus on just starting the game the right way and having a good first five minutes, which is one or two shifts per guy on our team. That's what we've been talking a lot about lately, Jay. Let's just go five minutes at a time. That's one or two shifts at a time. What can you do to help the team? And helping the team Friday against Brookings, for me, will be playing hard, playing fast, hunting back, putting pressure on them when they come up the rink with the rush, our defensemen staying tight to them. And when we get the puck, yes, let's shoot. Yes, let's get traffic. But hanging on to it is not such a bad thing because we've had some success with our down low, ga low game against these guys in the previous meetings. Yeah, absolutely. 7.15 puck drop here at the Odeo. Hopefully everybody will come out and uh, cheer on the wings on uh, Friday night against Brookings. And again, on Saturday night, 7.15 uh, as well, uh, here at the Odeo. And some uh, 
weekend Valentine's kind of specials and stuff going on. You'll have to check the Wings website and maybe the Facebook page and so on to, uh, to see what those are going to be. Coach, the following week we get into uh, Top Prospects Week where uh, Tucker DeYoung and Tanner Wilkerson are going to represent the Central Division. And Peter Tomei actually will be skating uh, in the, uh, with the East, it sounds like. Um, can you talk a little bit about the top prospects as a whole, what it does for these players, and how it can help showcase them and advance their careers? Yeah, it's a great event. The North American Hockey League has done a fantastic job with this event. It gets better and better every year. It seems like there are more college and professional coaches and scouts in attendance every year. I believe there'll be over 275 or 300 evaluators in attendance. Uh, it's an event that just about every Division I team goes to. Uh, most of the Division Three schools make sure that they send an assistant coach or head coach to this event. And what I think has been really cool is just every year I've been in the league, this is my third year in the North American League, it seems like every year there's more pro people at the event now. Every NHL team wants to be there because uh, the league sends uh, a lot of draft eligible kids to this event so they can be seen by the NHL scouts. So it's a fantastic event. If you're a player on a team in the NAHL and you're not going, it is not the end-all be-all, but it's a great opportunity for colleges to do, in my opinion, one of the following things. Make a decision on a player that they've seen a bunch prior, mm -hmm. or if you're a younger guy going to this event, maybe this is where you get on the radar and your process starts. They want to come out and see you one more time before the end of the year. Maybe you play great at the top prospects event, you get on a college's radar for the following year. So it's a really, really neat event. It's two games over two days. The U.S. National Under-17 program will be there. We're going to a great rink in Plymouth, Michigan, where the U.S. development team plays. Um, it's going to be a fun event. I'm happy for Tanner, Tucker, and Peter that they get a chance to go. And I'm sure they will represent the Aberdeen Wings. And, make our community and our organization feel real proud. Absolutely. Well, and Peter, of course, is committed to UND, and there's been a handful of, of other commits that are going to top prospects this year. In the past, uh, it was for only players that were not committed, if I'm not mistaken, or uncommitted. Um, what, uh, what's the, what the change there? Does it have to do with the NHL, as you mentioned? Here's how it works. Uh, players that play on the 18 and under select team, are they're able to go if they're committed. Uh, but it has to be for the 18U team. Now, in the case of Peter, he's one of, I believe, it's four goalies right now in the North American League on the, NA, on the NHL Central Scouting watch list. The league wanted to find a way to get those goalies to this event okay. so they could be recognized and seen by the NHL scouts. So they've had to move, maneuver it around a little bit. Peter's playing on the East team just so he can be there and he could be playing and he can be seen. So if you're, if you're committed, you have to be on that select team. Or in the case of Peter, he would have been on the select team. But because there are so many good young goalies in this league, the league is working it so that they can get all these guys there in front of the NHL teams. Hope that, hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great that the league is finding a way to get Tomei and the three other goalies to this event. Um, because it, it's, it's just gonna, it's gonna do a lot for the league. It's gonna do a lot for the exposure of the league. And the one thing that's really cool about the North American League right now is that there's a lot more young goalies in the league. Okay. And the coaches are, are letting these young goalies have these opportunities and play through it. And it's putting the North American League on the map more. And that's really cool, because you know how it goes, Jay. For every player you move up, whether it be to college or you get drafted, you, you, you 10 to 100 to 1,000 more kids get interested and want to play for your program and want to play in your league. So it's good stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Coach, what does the week of practice look like for you guys going up in, into Brookings? Um, you, know, you know, we kind of talked about well, before Saturday's game how you guys lately have been starting really strong but maybe falling off a little bit in the third. I've had some people ask me if I think that that's a conditioning thing, and I tell them absolutely not. I don't think it's a conditioning thing. Just, uh, you know, just being able to... to push back when, uh, when, when being pushed or, or when having been pushed. Um, is there anything that you can do this week of practice to, to maybe kind of balance that out a little bit as we spoke about a little bit anyway in the pregame Saturday? Yes, and fair question on conditioning. That's something we think about all the time. What we're going to do this week is we're going to make sure we're ultra rested and ready. We had an unbelievably hard day on Monday. We just, again, all we did on Monday, Jay, was we tried to recreate those situations that we're getting in the game but we're not finishing. Try to bring it to practice and have an ultra-competitive day where you're rarely shooting alone. 
but you have somebody on you, right. putting duress on you, putting pressure on you. Now that tires out the body. So we had a long day Monday. Tuesday, we're gonna stay off the ice. The guys are gonna just work on their bodies in the weight room. And then Wednesday, Thursday, we're gonna have fast paced practices, but we're gonna go a little bit shorter. I wanna make sure the guys are rested and ready and have energy for hopefully six great periods of hockey this weekend in two big games. So to the point about conditioning, I, I actually want to approach it the other way. Right. We did good conditioning on Monday. We had a great work day on Monday. We're going to work hard Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We're going to work a little shorter Wednesday, Thursday. And Tuesday, we're going to work hard in the weight room. Yeah. And we're going to let the gear dry, and we're going to give the guys a break from the ice. Because we have played a lot of hockey, and you know how it is this time of the year. Rest can be your greatest weapon. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, uh, as Coach mentioned, uh, looking for uh, six strong periods of play this weekend. We'll be in action at home here uh, at the ODI Center. Again, 7-15 puck drop both Friday and Saturday night, Friday against Brookings and Saturday against mine. I hope to see you all out here at the ODI Center and uh, cheering on the Wings. That'll do it for this week's Wings Weekly.